Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our IPEN IPU Public Engagement Hub seminar. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Christina Lesson-Bandeira, and I'm chair of the International Parliament Engagement Network, IPEN, which co-hosts with the IPU, the Public Engagement Hub. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you today to our seminar on teacher training by parliaments, which might seem a bit unusual topic, but actually is incredibly important. So the seminar is part of a series that we have been developing of seminars exploring issues of public engagement um, with parliament following the publication in March last year of the Global Parliamentary Report on Public Engagement by the IPU and UNDP. Before introducing today's topic in more detail and our speakers, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, can you please keep, um, first of all, translation, sorry. Uh, translation of the seminar is available into and from Spanish and French. So if you like to choose those languages, please go to the bottom of your screen. I should be able to see a globe symbol there where you can choose your language, your preferred language. Likewise, we may have questions in French or English, so if English is your favourite language to, to listen, please click on, on English as your language. Um, throughout the, the, the seminar, unless you're speaking, please keep your uh, microphone muted. However, it's really nice to see faces, so if you are able to keep your camera on, if your internet connection allows you, then you're very, very welcome to, put, to have your camera on. So today we turn to ways in which parliaments can amplify um, their work on education by investing in teacher training programs. Obviously all schools have men or all countries have many schools and schools are an excellent way to reach out to young people. They are everywhere. However, it's not always that easy for parliaments to go to all schools all the time. So one of the ways to doing that is through teacher training to try to amplify what parliament can do in the field of education on parliament. And so this seminar focuses exactly on that. How can parliament amplify the education provision by training teachers? And we have two excellent case studies to look at. First of all, we'll look at case study from Brazil, from the lower chamber, the chamber of deputies. And then we'll look at the case of the UK parliament and the programs that both parliaments have been developing for some time now. And I'll introduce the speakers now, and then we'll also explain about the structure of the seminar and I'll pass on to our speakers. So from Brazil, we have uh, the very lovely Corina Castro, who's leading, uh, coordinating the team that developed the pedagogic mission at the Chamber of Deputies, which, which we'll hear about. And she's also very pleased to say that she's very proud to work with the team. She thinks she works with the best team in the world on, on, on these sort of fields. And together with her, we have Elise Gomes de Oliveira, who is a designer and a facilitator of learning experiences at the same service of the um, pedagogic mission at the Chamber of Deputies. And from the UK, we have David Carr, who leads on teacher training at the UK Parliament, which, as you'll see, involves a, a number of different activities. So each presenter will do a presentation of up to 15 minutes. And then after that, we should have plenty of time for Q&A. If anyone has got any comments or anything they want to share or any questions throughout the presentations, if you want to put something in the chat, you're very welcome. And then I'll pick it up at the end. But we'll do questions at the end of both presentations. I hope that's clear for everyone. So without further ado, I'll pass on the word to Karina, who will share her screen to, for her presentation. Over to you, Karina. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. I am Corina and I work to, in the, at the School of the Chamber of Deputies in Brazil. And uh, I am very proud to develop these programs and to lead my team, as Chris, Christina told you. And I will present to you uh, one of the programs we have here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that we call Pedagogic Mission. 
and we have been doing it since 2011. And we had a, a, a stop, a, a, a pause during the COVID pandemic, uh, which is this program is, is destined to educators, not only for teachers, because we have here to uh, some uh, professionals who work at schools. Uh, and since then, we have we we had uh, more than two thousand and five hundred alumni, and it is a three-stage program uh, uh, with uh, one hundred and thirty hours altogether. Uh, as you see here, we have a, a very nice school with trees and a very nice environment. And uh, we used to do something, some uh, activities out there uh, uh, near the, the trees and the birds. It's very, uh, very, very good to, to be there. Uh, here at the, the school of the Chamber of De Deputies that we call C4, which is a very difficult acronym, acronym. And when I will save us from explaining that, but we call it Sephora, and we have three educational functions. We have corporate education only for staff. We have education for democracy, which is for all society, and we have segmented it in uh, ages and uh, edu the 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 net level of education. And we have to research production and dissemination of knowledge about the, the legislative uh, in postgraduate courses for staff and for society, which uh, Christina have uh, participated in uh, some, some of them. Here is our school from the top. And uh, with, with what we consider uh, education for democracy as a concept, we consider it a process of appropriating practices, knowledge, and values to maintain and improve democracy. It's, we consider that it's not about uh, teaching democracy, but it's about practicing democrat democratic values in schools communities. Uh, we think that it starts with the involvement of people and it's a practice, a practice in, with educators, uh, students and the community of schools to exercise citizenship and foster the democratic values. And that's why we decided to offer uh, some very active and participating activities. Uh, this is our our model that we concept conceptual model that we use uh, in the intention to educate for democracy. And we develop this with the, all the teachers in the in the program, the mission pedagogic pedagogic mission program. Uh, for whom it is intended to to be. Uh, we have teachers and other educations as pedagogical advisors, directors, coordinators, and things like that. Uh, for primary and secondary schools too, exclusively for public schools, and all the 27 Brazilian states are represented in the program. Uh, Brazil is a very big country, as you know, and uh, to have here this, uh, all of these states represented, we have 64 teachers in minimum, for the minimum. These are they, uh, they are in a commission room and they are doing a, a kind of presentation there, a, a very, a very active uh, technique for them to, to know each other and things like that. How do you do, how do we do this, uh, this program? It is a three stage program. Uh, we have, first of all, a course called Education for Democracy in the Parliament, which is 40 hours. 
and it is online. Uh, and then we have a classroom course at the Chamber of Deputies, also with 40 hours. And they come here, all of them, they know each other, they visit the, the parliament, they observe the, the functioning of the parliament, the, the discussions they have in, in the plenary, and then they develop the, their, the, their own projects of application of this knowledge at the schools. Uh, and then they go to the, they go back to the, the schools and apply these local projects with the a mentoring uh, for, uh, of us. And it is a 50 hours uh, course. Uh, this is one of the activities here in the, at the chamber. And uh, the course of educa the course education for democracy and the parliament, which I said it's forty hours, uh, we have uh, 432 teachers and educators involved. It's a distant learning with mentoring, uh, and the pathway is democracy, legislative education for democracy, education for democracy in schools. Two participants from each stage are selected for the next stage. Uh, and they are selected uh, uh, between the, the projects that they present. They present a project and we select them by, uh, as they are the better, the best uh, during the course. After that, we have uh, uh, a classroom course here and uh, it is a 40 hours too, and it is for only 64 teachers and educators. It's an insight into the Chamber of Deputies. Uh, they share experiences from all over Brazil. It's a very animated one, and they are very enthusiastic to bring uh, the things from their state and as you know, it is a very big country. And sometimes people from the South don't know what people from the North really eat or how they live. And it's very interesting to have them together. And there is, uh, there are a, par there is a party uh, on Thursday and it's very good, it's very animated. Uh, it's in inspiration for design and they have inspiration for design at the project to be applied locally. It's based on active and dialogical methodologies, as we uh, we uh, we know that this is very important for them to 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 learn, as they can apply this in their, their in their projects. And this is one of the activities. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, and then they go home and they go to school and they locally apply their projects, the, the 64 teachers. And we have, we offer them a distance learning with mentoring and some online meetings. And uh, they design and implement the, uh, the, their projects at school. And then they share these big experiences uh, in on the online, uh, online, uh, uh, environments. This is uh, one of the classrooms, and then we have a, a, an impact. We have we have been uh, yeah, evaluating this uh, core, this program. For uh, I'm sorry, but my phone is insisting to call me. <laughs> sorry. Okay, and I will. Turn it off. Okay, we have uh, evaluating the uh, this program since 2016, and uh, we have a report of significant change in teaching practices. Uh, Ninety six percent of the of the participants began to work on issues of democracy, citizenship, politics, and the legislative in everyday school life, which is very good for us. 88 for of the projects were continued 
Two books were published by the participants and the teachers made some networks and collectives were created, which is which we, we found very nice. Uh, some of the testimonials, I will keep this for you if you want to see, but I have to to give Alice some word because she is responsible for the magic of all the program, okay? Then Alice, it's with you. Thank you for hearing. Thank you, Karina. Elise? Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here sharing with you this experience. My English skills are not so good and I'll try um, communicate with you today. And I, I'd like to highlight one point. There is the main idea of this program. Uh, there is to promote education for democracy in schools. And uh, one first challenge is to change the perception of the role of the teachers. The role of the teachers is not teaching democracy, it's impossible, but we can learn together, although we can't teach. And this is a important movement in this training process. And uh, after uh, the all after all the course, we see that important change in the school's environment. And each teacher develop a specific project according to uh, his or her contest and school uh, features. And this is an important point of all this project because we highlight the ability to create new realities in schools, reforcing the, the democratic values. So we, we don't expect that teacher, teachers teach about parliament, about how laws are made, although this is, these are important issues but we expect that this teacher can be able to mobilize his own com community to experience these values, these democratic values in the everyday experiences in school. And uh, we, we saw- We've got two minutes how now. Okay, we saw how powerful this approach can be and how teachers uh, see his, uh, he, his, um, his self different after all this process. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Elise. That's really, really interesting. And I think that'll be a really nice contrast with the UK experience, which is, as, as far as I understand, I don't want to put the words in David, which focus a lot on what the UK Parliament does. So you try to make that, to make sure that the teachers are developing those practices in, in schools. And I've got lots of questions about that, but I'm sure we can, we have, lots of people have questions after when it comes to the question answer session. So David, over to you now. Uh, thank you, Christina, and hello, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Karina and Elise. It was wonderful to, to follow you and to, to compare our two different programs. There are lots of similarities, but also, also some differences. So I'm part of the teacher training team at UK Parliament. And uh, it's a team of about 70 people. And we work with young people right from early years, right through primary, secondary, and also college up to the age of 18. Uh, we have separate teams that work with the UK population as a whole. So we're specifically focused on 18s and, and under. Uh, and I lead the teacher training team. Uh, it's a very small team. There are three of us. Uh, 
But as Christina said right at the start in her introduction, the whole idea of teach training based in Parliament is that the teachers amplify our three voices. Uh, and although we're not as large as Brazil, um, we work with the whole of the UK and uh, welcome teachers from all four nations in the United Kingdom. So um, the bulk of our work is with the next generation of teachers. So we took a, a strategic decision to work with teachers at the beginning of their career while they were undergoing their training. So that th the idea is that they would become allies, champions of parliament throughout their career. So we catch them when they're very enthusiastic and we show them how at every age politics and democracy, which they sometimes find think are going to be challenging subjects, we show them how they can make them engaging, exciting and interesting for all their young people, no matter what their age is. So these are some of the partnerships that we've developed over the, the last 10 years or so with different teacher training organisations, and many of them are universities. But now in the UK, the teacher training uh, scene is much more fragmented and there's a lot of school-based teacher training, uh, school-centered initial teacher training known as SKITS. So throughout the year, we work with many of these teacher training organizations. Alongside that stream of work, oh, there are some uh, photographs. So we go to them. Uh, so top left there is one of my colleagues, Rosie. Uh, she is giving a workshop at Newman University near Birmingham. Uh, those are the top two pictures. The bottom two pictures are of a group of teachers that traveled up from Cornwall, which is in the very extreme Southwest of the UK. And they came to spend three uh, hours at Parliament. So they were able to see how Parliament works for themselves and then go back inspired by what they've seen, we hope, uh, and go back and convince their, their young children that they uh, can get involved themselves. So we go to the universities and they also come to us. Now, uh, any teacher in the UK can join our UK Parliament Teacher Network. This is a professional network for teachers across the UK. Uh, it's completely free, and if they sign up, uh, they get access to resources, uh, events, a members hub, and monthly newsletters, so they can keep up to date with what happens at Parliament. And we introduced this because, obviously, when we went to universities, we didn't have contact details of all the trainee teachers. So it, we wanted a, a pathway so that they could start a partnership with Parliament. So when we're giving the workshop towards the end, we encourage them to join the teacher network so that we can continue to maintain that link with them throughout their career. We have around 5,000 members of the teacher network at the moment, and it's uh, expanding uh, quite, quite rapidly. Now, uh, they and any other teachers can make use of our CPD, our e-learning modules for teachers, continuous professional development. These are learning modules which sit on, on our website 24 seven. So you can work through them at your own pace. And by the way, you're very welcome to, to try one of them, uh, just sign up. Uh, so we have them on the work of the House of Commons, the work of the Upper House, the House of Lords. We have them on the difference between Parliament and government, because, as you know, that's often a concept which is Absolutely. which is uh, not well understood. Um, we have them on how laws are made, on general elections and on the work of select committees. They take around an hour, um, but you can work through them at your own pace and... Uh, if you complete a module, then you get a certificate of participation signed by the Speaker of the House of 
of Commons and the Speaker of the House of Lords. So, uh, so that's uh, an encouragement, we hope. However, the, the main thing I'm here to talk to you about today is, is our Teacher Ambassador Programme. Now, I've only worked at Parliament uh, for nine years, but this started, I believe, in 2006. Uh, I don't know which Parliament around the world originated it. It may have been Canada. Uh, I know they started before us, but uh, uh, Brazil, as you say, you've been doing it since 2011. So we started around 2006. Now, when I arrived, this was a week-long residential program for 70 teachers, and it was held once a year. Um, and I thought, well, it's quite difficult to get a week away from school. So why not turn it into twice a year for three days? And that way we would double the number of people who could, who could come on it. So now we run it every January, late January and late June or early July, because those are good weeks for, for schools to maybe release you know, a teacher. So uh, you have to apply for this course. So it's not open access. Um, so as in Brazil, uh, they have to apply. They have to answer three fairly basic questions. Why do you want to do the course? How is it going to impact on your students? And what three next steps are you going to take following the course? Uh, we, as I say, it's always oversubscribed. We award 70 places in January and 70 places in, in, um, in June. Uh, and the lucky 70 uh, who have impressed us through their responses to the, uh, to the questions, the lucky 70 uh, are awarded their places. They get to know in October before January. So they have uh, three months or so before they actually arrive when they can prepare for the three day program. And um, they do this, we send them tasks and reading lists so that they can, they can do as much preparation in advance of the actual three day course. And then they arrive, let's take January as an example, they arrive in January and they're at top left uh, on the very first morning, they have a private meeting with the Speaker of the House of Commons in the Speaker's apartments. And then on the Wednesday, when they leave, they have a meeting with the uh, Lord Speaker, the Speaker of the House of Lords. So they get to meet uh, senior officials, they get to meet their MPs, they get to meet each other and they share ideas with each other throughout the three days. That's a key element of the programme. And on the first afternoon, we invite all the alumni, the people who've done it before, we invite some of them to come back and show case what they've done following their, the, the, their course. So it's like a show and tell. So the experienced ambassadors show the new ambassadors exactly what they can do in their schools and in their communities. And I should have said at the start that uh, each teacher has to uh, get permission and the backing, the support of their line manager, usually the head teacher, so that we know the school is behind their application and that the school is going to allow them time to uh, carry out the work that we want them to do following the course. So, as I said, members play a big part, members of parliament. So on the left there, you've got Bridget Phillipson, uh, uh, an MP who is the opposition spokesperson for education. Here she is meeting her teacher ambassador, who is called Nick. On the right there, that was in parliament. On the right, this is where MPs go into schools and work with the students directly. And that is facilitated by our teacher ambassadors as well. So the, we get members involved as much as possible. Here's another example. On the left, we have a member, middle of the picture there, bottom left is Sam Tarry. He's, a, he's an MP for 
uh, Essex uh, and out of London. Uh, and as you can see, he's been invited into the school and he's inspired the year 11 and 12. Um, and they're studying politics, so they know quite a bit already. He inspired them so much that they then went on a trip to UK Parliament, and you can see them in the bottom right uh, at, during their visit to our education centre, because we have a permanent education centre there. And then the same students, the year 10, 11 and 12 students, they went into primary schools in their local community, and they actually taught the children what they'd learnt from Parliament and from their MP. So you've got people closer in age to the children, uh, teaching them, inspiring them. And we think that also works well, um, because as you know, people in younger age groups, uh, 18 to 25 year olds are not voting as much as people of my age group. We also get them to submit a portfolio of evidence following the program, where they show us exactly what they've done in the school. So often this will include schemes of work, which they've developed for all the teachers in their school to then embed the teaching of parliament and democracy into their termly work. Um, so we ask, ask for quite a lot of detail to be awarded um, the highest level of ambassadorship because we have three levels gold, silver, and bronze. Most people go for silver and bronze, and they actually, sorry, silver and gold, and they actually, uh, most of them get gold. Um, and then they don't stop at their own school or the partner school. They often go into universities. Uh, for example, Leeds Beckett University there in the middle, um, and they deliver training themselves in universities. So they're helping us to reach as many new teachers as possible. A couple of minutes, David. Yeah, and this is the last but one slide. Teacher ambassador, these are the three, three programs, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. You don't have to decide before you come, but during the course, you have to decide which you're gonna aim for, and then submit a portfolio of evidence, uh, usually within the following year and then you're awarded your acc accreditation. You get a badge, a banner for your school website to say that you've got accreditation. So we're gonna take questions later, but you'll get our contact details. Please do feel free if you've got any questions that occur later to contact us at teachertraining at parliament.uk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. That was really interesting. <clears throat> and, and again, a really good contrast comparison with the approach in Brazil. So we've got, because both teams were so perfect with time, we've got about 25 minutes for time for questions, which is absolutely great. So um, if you'd like to ask any question, just please click on um, raise your hand, which I think you can find at the bottom of your screen and the reactions, or if you rather ask the question through it, through chat, I can then read it for you. Uh, please just type your your question in the chat. So we're now opening uh, for questions. So we have one already. If anyone's got any more questions, please just raise your hand. Um, Eduardo, do you want to come through? And when, when you ask a question, just say very briefly who you are, you know, your role. Okay, thank you, Christina. Thank you for the speakers, for the excellent presentations. I would like to ask for the Brazilian team, uh, Maria Lisi and Vivian, uh, why the focus is on just on public schools. Uh, I would like to know something about that. And I would like to know too, if uh, do you have some uh, evaluation impact about the projects, what the nature of the projects implemented in the private, in the schools. And uh, I would like to listen David, too, about the results, if you have some uh, results to present to us about the number of uh, schools, uh, students, and since during the, the years, uh, how many uh, students get contact with the program? 
Thank you so much for the presentations again. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, so this is three questions, two uh, mainly for Corina and Elise about uh, the type of schools and evaluation of projects. And then um, the last one for you, David. So Corina or Maria Alice, which one would you like to come? Sorry. It's fine? Uh, yes. yes, yes, it is. Oh, thank you, Eduardo, for your questions. And uh, we do, uh, Alice, desliga o seu microfone, tá? Uh, we um, uh, only bring the, we, we work with the public schools because Brazil is a very big country and the public schools are very, uh, they are, in, they have many needs and, and uh, it's difficult for them to, to, to access this knowledge and then uh, uh, we, we, the, the costs of bringing them to, to here to Brasilia are very big. And then we decided to select the, the public schools for this program only, but that we have another other programs that we have uh, all the schools that can be bring, uh, can be here. And uh, for the project, as the, uh, the projects, the evaluation, uh, we had some evaluation because we have uh, we 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 received some information that the this project have been uh, premiados. How can I say that uh, they it's have earned, been rewarded? Earned a prize, yes. Yeah, they yeah they earned a prize, and we know because we, they they tell us, but we don't do the evaluation of these projects. They we have only the 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 como se diz Cristina a narração sabemos a narrativa the, the, yeah the narrative you, you just know what the project did so the description yeah. of the project rather than yeah. how it was implemented uh, or evaluated Alice would you like to to yes. add something yes the projects have different themes according to the reality of each school, each, each teacher, and the themes are, um, for example, school assemblies, uh, getting to know the community, getting to know the local legislative, um, different themes according to the reality of each teacher, based on the idea uh, to stimulate the democratic values in schools. And it can be made uh, from a large number of ways. Can I, can I just clarify on that? So the, the, the sort of projects, could it be, for instance, uh, asking the pupils in the school to do a voting, to do um, so something that it's about democracy, but it does not need to include the Congresso, the Congress in any way. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, but some some projects uh, are related to parliament laws. Some of them, but others, no. Yes, yeah, so it's up to them to define that. Yes. Great. Thank you. And David, do you want to say some, a little bit about evaluation? Yes, uh, thank you, Eduardo, for your question. So in terms of evaluation, we obviously get them to evaluate their own experience during the course. Um, and they also evaluate the speakers they've had. Uh, in terms of reach, you know, how many students do they actually reach as a result of the programme? Uh, a typical cohort of 70 teachers as ambassadors will go on to reach 30,000 students, 30,000 students. So it's around 500 students per teacher. So you can see the massive amplification there is through this program. And that is the, that is the number of students that they directly reach. But of course, they also train their colleagues. So, so if you count 
all the students that their colleagues will go on to reach, then the amplification is even greater. Thank you very much, David. Ijuafi uh, Hadi Kamilan, can you come in? Just your question. Um, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Hadi from Malaysia. So I have two questions. Um, previously, I'm working with Parliament as a research officer, and currently, uh, you're working at uh, Reform. Reform is uh, one of the civil society. I mean, promote how parliamentary democracy works in Malaysia. So my two question is about first, uh, uh, when I was a parliamentary research officer, we do not have a very, <clears throat> uh, 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 I mean, complete syllabus. I mean, to teaching uh, uh, teachers uh, or or uh, 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 with regards of the uh, uh, democratic values uh, in the school. But I, but so my question is that if if Parliament of Malaysia would like to I mean, uh, come out with the uh, training or the program that you suggested uh, or which have been made in the UK and also in Brazil. What is the best strategies? I mean, of course, I mean, you have to develop with the syllabus and then, then you can promote it to the uh, teachers uh, in the in the in the ministry. So then how about the relationship with between because of I believe the teachers is under the ministries of education. Uh, jurisdictions and uh, the parliament is something else and then that's my first question about the best strategies that if you can suggest for uh, for, for for me secondly about the I believe this is a uh, extra whether this program is it extra curriculum or is it compulsory subject in one of the because of in Malaysia that we have a lot of uh, subject that need to teach to the students so it's like it's, it, it, it becomes a burden to the teachers so that's the reason why every time we're asking to put uh, uh, elements of the uh, democratic or citizen, uh, citizen, citizenship uh, subjects or values. So most of the time it had been rejected by the ministries of education because of the burden that the teachers have right now to teach uh, students. So if you can enlighten us uh, or enlighten me with regards of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hadi. So two excellent questions. So the, the first one is about the best strategy. And it's interesting, Hadi, that you mentioned about the relationship with the Ministry of Education, because in a lot of countries, I know parliaments actually do do that, try to work with the ministry to have programs like youth parliaments, for instance, to reach out to schools. Um, but that's not always possible. There's different different possibilities, but I'm not the expert. So I'm going to ask first um, David to address that. Um, and, and then the extracurriculum issue, which I know is a huge issue, at least in the UK, because teachers have to teach so many things. And I don't know if you've got a comment on that. So I'll start with David this time, and then I'll go to Corinne and Mirielis. So David. Uh, thank you, Hadi. That's a great question. Uh, I'm not sure how well I'll be able to answer it, but here, let's go. Um, so in terms of strategy as well, um, we uh, have worked with a lot of other parliaments to uh, discuss how we can get younger people involved. So uh, I mentioned the Canadian Parliament earlier. I went to shadow their Teachers Institute. Uh, just recently, I think uh, maybe they're on the line, uh, Olena from Ukraine came to shadow um, our three-day program here. So there's a lot of informal work we can do uh, through organizations like uh, the Interparliamentary Union to encourage uh, each other to develop our programs. In terms of the load for teachers, uh, it is a problem here in the UK as well, uh, because teachers are often teaching very much towards the, the, their particular subject, especially at secondary level. And they often don't think there are opportunities for uh, looking at parliament and democracy. So that's exactly where we come in and we, we say, well, um, you have to teach the whole child and you're, you're helping them to become responsible adults in later life and play out their part in democracy. So it's vital that you cover these subjects. Uh, and in the UK, citizenship is, I should say in England, citizenship is, is compulsory between 
11 and 16, I believe. Um, so there's, um, for certain age groups, it is important. And at primary level, uh, teachers have to uh, teach about uh, fundamental values in society. So uh, primary teachers especially need often a lot of support uh, from us to help them approach these topics in a accessible way for their children. Thanks so much, David. That's so interesting. And and we do have Olena here. She's she's just there, <laughs> watching it all. And Corinne Mirialis, which one of you want to pick up on these two questions? Uh, thank you, thank you very much. It's it's Zuafi for your questions. A great, great question, really. And uh, for me, in my opinion, uh, the best strategy would be uh, to begin simple and try to to grow things up as you walk. And uh, really, really, the teachers have lots of things to teach. And uh, what we decided to do was to teach them how to use active methodolo methodologies. Because uh, although Paulo Freire is, was a uh, uh, Brazilian teacher, a Brazilian philosopher. Uh, many teachers in Brazil don't use and don't know active methodologies, participate dialogical methodologies, for example. And then we decided to do this for the, for them to learn how to use to be for them to use to 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 be the the subject of doing that with the the the, the pairs, and then. For them to use in classrooms and I think it is it works thank you thank you very much um Karina and I'm a big big fan of active learning I try to use it as much as possible in my own teaching that's the only way to involve people and we've got three questions now which is brilliant um Olena could you I probably don't say your name properly sorry if you want to go first it's it's okay. Thank you so much. Good evening, dear colleagues. And um, I want to thank uh, once again about the organizing such an interesting seminars for all of us. And I want to add some words about what the David said. Um, as a representative of the Ukrainian Parliament, I'm the head of the Education Center of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. And this summer we had a unique opportunity to show how the teachers program work in the UK Parliament. So this was very inspired for us and right now we are prepared the special documents a special um, initiating process to make the same program on the basic of the education center of the our parliament so who knows maybe very very soon we will be able to represent the teachers program on the basic of the ukrainian parliament so we will keep in touch and thank you once again that's absolutely brilliant, Olena. And you're very welcome to come back here and, and present the way you're doing it yourself uh, next year, hopefully. Uh, Connor, do you want to ask your question? You also have a really interesting program in Ireland. Say a little bit about who you are first for people who don't know you. Absolutely, Christina. Thank you. And uh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Conor Rail, and I am the Parliamentary Education Officer um, here for the Irish Parliament in Dublin. And I suppose really, I, I, you know, I have a question and a comment really, and my comment, I think, will support what Elena has just spoken about there. Um, when I started in my current role, and I was the first ever parliamentary education officer here, um, the, David and his colleagues in Westminster in the education unit there uh, very kindly allowed me to shadow the, the teacher ambassador program as well. I think in January 2018, seems ages ago at this stage, but uh, I was just blown away and, and I think David used the word himself, it was inspiration. So a lot of the ideas and a lot of the methodologies and resources that David and his colleagues there were using, um, I'm trying to implement those um, here as well. So just really to compliment David and his team on, on, on the work that they do um, in Westminster. And um, so, yeah, as I said, I've tried to, you know, um, take some elements of that and incorporate them here. It's a little bit difficult. I am the only person in the education unit. Uh, so I am the education unit here in the uh, in the Irish Parliament. So it is a little bit difficult, but uh, we're, I think we're, we're getting there bit by bit. And I was particularly interested to hear 
from um, my 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 uh, counterparts in in Brazil, from Karina and Mary Ellis, um, just on the the teacher program there because this year um, I've implemented a program for primary school teachers, and something similar to what you have uh, implemented, they do projects at the end of their their weeks uh, program here with me. Now we're slightly different in that we have a concession from the Department of Education for teachers who complete our teacher education program. They actually get three days extra holidays. Uh, from the Department of Education. So I think that's a major incentive to do it. But I was just wondering for the projects that the teachers complete as part of your project, your, uh, your, your, your program, um, are they distributed to other teachers within Brazil? Is there some place where they can look them up, where they can see these, these superb projects that are being undertaken? Are they shared generally? Because I think that would be a really effective way of getting the, the information out there and seeing, you know, examples of, of really, really good practice. So that, that's just my question. That's a great question, Connor. Before passing on to Karina, can we ask, can we listen to Nina's question? Because I'm just worried about time so we can get to it in uh, and then I'll pass on to Karina to reply to Connor. Nina. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, for your, in I want to thank the speakers for their inspiring presentations. My name is Nina Ritz and I'm only since June uh, responsible for the youth projects and school projects here in Berlin at the German parliament. And I have two questions. Uh, first one is to both speakers, um, how are the projects financed? And the second question is, are the project projects influenced by the current politics of your countries? Thank you. Two great questions. I was going to ask about finance, so I don't need to anymore. That's great. Um, Karina, can you answer Connor's question about, um, well, both of them actually. So Connor is about whether the projects are shared, and then Nina's question about finance and influence by politics. Okay, uh, the, 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 the projects are shared in our, on our platform, our online learning platform. And they are shared here when they stay here for one, one week, sharing the experiences. And, uh, uh, and then there are some of uh, uh, their initiatives, they, they publish uh, two books and they share these experience in, in these books too. Uh, after that, we have some, uh, some kind of resources in our platform called EVC, which is uh, a, a portal with many, many resources for that uh, objective of educating for democracy. And for Nina, uh, 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 the question of the funding, um, all of the, the programs we have here are funded by public, public uh, resources, all of them. That's why we have some problems because it's not enough for everybody. We have 27 states in Brazil. But thank you for your question, and Connor, thank you for your question too. Thank you very much. I'm loving these teams of one of education program leaders coming in here, trying to get ideas. Um, and David, can you answer now? Yeah, the question from Nina about finance and sure and, and influence of politics. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Alina and um, Connor. And I promise I didn't ask them to say what they what they said. Um, but yes, back to your question. Uh, so in terms of finance, Nina, um, we are financed by the House of Commons Commission, uh, which is uh, neutral and the chair of the commission is the speaker. So the speaker of the House of Commons. So both the speaker of the House of Commons and the Lord Speaker are impartial in, in their houses. So, they're not influenced by the government of the day. Um, although obviously some government ministers like the shadow, uh, the leader of the house, I should say, uh, is on the commission as well. So can contribute to decisions about funding and management of the education engagement team. Uh, and we are financed by 70% House of Commons, uh, and 30% House of Lords. So that's the, 
that's the balance. Um, and people who win places at the teacher ambassador program don't pay anything. So we, we pay for their accommodation, their flights, their trains, and we also uh, obviously provide them with food as well while they're here. So we want it to be free, but then we expect them to work really hard in the work they do following the program. Thank you very much. And that's really important, isn't it, to enable participation, because otherwise you'd only have the, the reach of schools being able to send people um, to have that support there. Exactly. And I think we just, well, we're just getting to time, so I'll leave it there unless there's any primary, any very last minute questions. But just to say everyone being very complimentary of David and the programme in the UK Parliament, which I am also, but just to say that Maria, Lisa and Karina and her and their team in Brazil is as welcoming. So if there's anyone from within Latin America, part of the world, please do go and visit them because it is very inspirational what they do down there. And they're very, very creative in the way they, they promote that active learning with teachers and um, the involvement of teachers. So Elena, I think you have you are due a visit to, to Brazil also if you, if you can get that. <laughs> Um, right before before we finish, then just to and before I say my thank yous, just to announce our next seminar. So uh, these seminars, as I said at the beginning, they're co-hosted, co-organised by, by the IPU and the IPEN for the Public Engagement Hub, and our next seminar will be on the fourth of October. And it'll be on public petitions and we'll be focusing the case study of Nigeria. So very different reality to what we've been looking at today. Very different type of questions, but all about engagement between citizens and parliaments ultimately. And uh, Fiona is putting uh, some links in the chat so you can see the links in there to, to that seminar. But also all of our public engagement hub seminars, all the information, it's all available um, on the website, which um, Andy has already put the link in there, and you can see past recordings there also. For anyone who wants to uh, develop their involvement in these issues of public engagement parliament in a deeper way, then we would very much w welcome you to join IPEN, the I International Parliament Engagement Network, because then you're sort of part of the community that discusses things intensely. Either have to but if you did want to then you're very welcome to join and again the links will be in the chat and so for the next seminar if you want to add join that just please just register for that but for now I'm just going to thank everyone who has attended from Brazil all the way to Ukraine um with bits in in between um and in Germany Ireland etc a thank you to our interpreters who do a fantastic job in keeping up with our quick talking and translating into the respective languages and enable us to offer this to much wider audiences. And of course, our main thanks goes to the speakers who did a brilliant job to really to, to present in a very concise way, which are really extensive programs. So can you please join me to thank Karina, Elise and David, either online, either like that or virtual claps, however you prefer. 